Greetings from Portsmouth, Virginia. My name is Todd Elliott, and I want to say hi to my fellow classmates and my instructor in HIUS 530, uh, Christian Heritage. The impact of Christianity and the American founding is of utmost importance in colonial times, setting the stage for something revolutionary some years up the road. The Christian experience in the New World was varied almost from the beginning as Catholic priests from Spain and later from France began the work of missions among the Native Americans. The Church of England was the official church of much of British North America and would influence the colonies as long as they stayed colonies in the English realm. Mark Knoll in our text, A History of Christianity in the United States and Canada, noted the number of other denominations that carved out a place for themselves. The Puritans, the Baptists, uh, the no, that's the denomination that this student was brought up in, the Friends or the Quakers, the Presbyterians, and, and several others that time won't permit me to uh, talk about in this brief discussion. This influence of faith did not happen without conflict, however, particularly uh, between Europeans and the indigenous Americans. Dr. Schultz addressed this in his video presentation on Christian American, uh, Christian American, which he pointed out that all European countries were interested in, in evangelization. However, noted that there was a cost for this, especially early on. In 1542, Franciscan priest Juan de Padilla became the first Christian martyr in, in North America when slain by Native Americans in what is now Kansas. Jesuit missionary Jean Brebeuf carried on a successful work among the Hurons in Canada, uh, learning and even adapting some of their customs to make his ministry more effective. And yet, he was brutally martyred in 1649 by the Iroquois, tortured, scalped, heart torn out. Terrible uh, details revealed the nature uh, and the risks that are involved in spreading the faith in the New World. Pequot native and Methodist minister William Appis saw perhaps some justification in the backlash, and his words are very strong. He writes, he wrote in December 1620, the pilgrims landed at Plymouth, and without asking liberty from anyone, they possessed themselves of a portion of the country and built themselves houses and then made a treaty and commanded the natives to accede to it. This, if now done, it would be called an insult, and every white man would be called to go out and act the part of a patriot to defend their country's rights. And if every true intruder were butchered, it would be sung upon every hilltop in the Union that victory and patriotism was the order of the day. A study of the various charters and covenants produced in European America offer testimony to a certain evangelical zeal. Among these are included the first charter of Virginia uh, in April 1606, which talked about t taking the uh, propagating the Christian religion to the natives who, as yet, in their words, live in darkness and miserable ignorance of the true knowledge and worship of God. Uh, also, the uh, Massachusetts Bay Charter of 1629, which has a statement of intent that reads, whereby our said people inhabitants there may be so religiously, peaceably, and civilly governed as their good life and orderly con conversation may win and incite the natives of the country to the knowledge and obedience of the only true God and Savior of mankind. I'm looking forward to further study on the topic with all of you to see how the beginnings of uh, liberty become expressed through the desire for religious liberty. And in fact, I'd read uh, an article by Mary Builder on Charter